Hello Reefers, I'm Jeremy Wade and I am your Canadian Reef Master. Today we're looking at my Australian Scolemia coral. We're going to have a look at where they lie in biological classification and have a look at where they are on the hierarchy of taxonomy. We're going to see what's going on with them and which family they have made their way into over the past few years through molecular biological testing. In the last decade, the increasing use of novel molecular tools and morphological analysis, there have been much insight into the evolution of the scleractian corals. The integration of these novel genetic and morphological tools have allowed for the formation of new hypotheses on their evolutionary history. This has revolutionized the taxonomic ranking of these corals. Integration of molecular findings with the novel molecular and micromorphological skeletal data has led to identification of a new set of informative characters. These characters have been useful in revising of the families taxonomic and systematically, in particularly micromorphological characters such as the height, spacing, and shape of the septal teeth, the distribution and shape of granules on the spatial faces, and the structure of the area between these teeth. These are now known to be informative and diagnostic of the Lobophilia day as in other corals such as Acropora. Now I have two different types of scalemia in my tank. I have the button scalemia and the common Australian scalemia and a few different color variants. Now it's not until you look at the macro and micromorphological structures of the skeleton as well as incorporate molecular data into our analysis that we see that these corals aren't quite as related as we once thought. The button scalemia is actual Micromusa pacifica, and the common Australian scalemia is Homophilia australis, related to the Bower Bankies. When we look at the different morphological structures, we're looking more at the micromorphological structures between these corals that really give us those key differences, mainly in the septal height, spacing, and shape. Here we see Homophilia australis. One of the key distinguishing micromorphological features is that of the inner septal tooth being quite pronounced. Comparing to that of Micromusa pacifica here in the bottom row, you see the septal teeth are quite even compared to that of the top row of Homophilia australis. Here we will take a look at some of the genuses that are within the Lobophiliidae family. Many of these genuses have species that are now being rearranged into new classifications. Many different species are now found to not even be related within the same genus. With macro and micro morphological analysis as well as genetic analysis, we are able to reclassify many species into their rightful genuses. Here we see the button sclemia is now part of Micromusa, and Gonopora is no longer a Micromusa. We've also lost one of our favorite Acanthastria to Micromusa lorhaudensis. But this brings us now back to the Scalemia coral that is now actually a homophilia and is now in most close relation with that of the Bauer Banki. Macroscopic and microscopic morphological analysis alone is not enough to detect low level of homoplasy within Lobophilia day. However, with the addition of molecular analysis, we are able to do so. We are also able to determine the relative time at which different families of coral have undergone divergent evolution. In order to see these amazing corals in the wild, one must travel to the Southern Hemisphere, to Australia and the Southern Pacific Ocean. In Australia, you find Homophilia australis on the Greater Barrier Reef in the Southern Seaboard. The button scalemia, Micromusa pacifica, may be found in the South Pacific Ocean, in the lagoons north of the Mangareva Island, the Gambier Islands, and French Polynesia. The Great Barrier Reef has a vast diversity of life. Conservation-based sustainable harvest of coral allows for export of coral around the world, while managing reefs and ensuring that their health is optimum. Sustainable harvest allows us to observe the coral reef over time. This allows us to protect coral that are at risk for future decline through conservation efforts. 
In the wild, Homophilia australis are found solitary and are found in turbid waters on shallow reefs and rocky outcrops. One of the best things about keeping the Sclemia coral is getting to see its evening feeding display once the lights get dim. Its tentacles expand out as you can see in this bleeding apple Sclemia. It is important to feed your Scalibia coral a few times a week, in particular if the par is much lower. Under higher par, the coral zooxanthellae are able to synthesize more carbohydrates that nourish the coral. Thus, the coral under higher par may not require as many feedings. In the home aquarium, they do well under low to medium light, anywhere from 50 to 175 par. They do best mounted sideways with indirect moderate flow. Care for Micromusa pacifica, the button scolemia, is very similar to that of Homophilia australis. Here you see Micromusa pacifica, the button scolemia, as well as Homophilia australis and Homophilia bowerbanki up to the right. In this video, we've been looking at Scalemia coral, specifically Micromusa pacifica and Homophilia australis. It's important that we also mention Homophilia bowerbanki. This coral is a great alternative to the Scalemia coral. The bowerbanki are colonial coral that may be aquacultured and thus fetch lower prices than that of the Scalemia coral. The reef enthusiast may get a single head of a bowerbanki and it will grow into a small colony over many months. This is a great alternative to that of the Scalemia coral and have a very similar appearance. One cannot deny that the feeding display demonstrated by Homophilia australis is probably one of the most amazing among all coral. Well, reefers, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Scalemia coral. We've had a look at the taxonomic hierarchy and what family it now belongs to. This is a great coral. I love it and it has an awesome feeding display to watch at night time. I hope that maybe you get to have a look at one of these in a local reef shop and maybe pick one up and try it out yourself. I hope you all have a great weekend and enjoy your reef. Take care, everybody.